Hi there, my name is Andy. And I'm Laura. And we're from the Office of Campus Ministry here at Bellarmine. Today, we are going to show you some crafts that you can do to celebrate some interfaith holidays that are also going on around this time of year. The crafts that we are going to do today will surround the holidays of Hanukkah and Yule. So we hope that no matter what your faith tradition, that you'll learn something new today and to maybe find a new tradition that you can incorporate into your own practices at home. And we're going to start with the Jewish festival of Hanukkah. So, uh, Andy, how do you greet someone during Hanukkah? You would say, Hag Sameach. Hag Sameach, that's right. So where does Hanukkah originate in Jewish history? So about 2,100 years ago um, in Israel, there was a Syrian Greek um, ruler who took over and he forbid the reading of the Torah and practicing any of the commandments therein. He also took over the Holy Temple there in Jerusalem and defiled it with Greek uh, idols. And so a small group of Jewish uh, folks there called the Maccabees were very upset about this. And even though they were way outnumbered, decided that they would take on the Greek army and against all odds, they won. So when they took back over control of the Holy Temple, they wanted to light their menorah. And they found that only a small bit of oil was left uncontaminated by the Greeks. And so uh, that oil would only last them for about a day. And they had eight days that they needed to, to get some new oil to procure more. And so by some miracle of God, that tiny bit of oil lasted for eight days and nights. And so ever since then, the tradition and celebration of Hanukkah began. Yeah, Laura, and you'll find oil uh, as a pretty common symbol in uh, Hanukkah celebrations. For example, you'll see uh, oil fried jelly donuts. Um, you'll find oil fried uh, potato pancakes called latkes. Um, and of course, the menorah is the candelabra. Uh, that you commonly see. Uh, it's nine candles traditionally lit with oil uh, to commemorate uh, this event in Jewish history. That's right. And when the Maccabees reclaimed the temple, um, part of what that meant was a rededication of themselves to many of their Jewish values. And so folks today, when they light their menorah, they like to bring to mind those values and to commit themselves to that. And so as they're thinking about the light the lighting of those candles, how can they take that light out into the world? And one of those central values um, for most Jewish people is something called tikkun olam, which means repair of the world. And so what we might think of as social justice. So our craft today that we're going to do is we're going to talk about how you can be the light and take that light out into the world and um, in ways that are uh, for justice work around the world. Yeah, so do you want to go ahead and talk about the craft? Yeah, so yeah. Andy, why don't you tell us what supplies people will need if they're following along at home? Yeah, so the supplies that you will need, um, you're going to need just some old uh, magazines that you may have um, around the house. Uh, you need some uh, glue, or you can use tape as well. Um, you'll need cardstock paper, um, or really any paper of any kind, so you can attach your candles. Um, you, can, you may also want to use markers, uh, or maybe some scrapbook paper as well. So yeah, so that's what we're, that's what you need. Okay, so Andy's gonna demonstrate for us today, but he's gonna start off with just a nice blank piece of some scrapbook paper and uh, create our menorah first, the base of our menorah. So like you said, you can use markers to draw one um, or you can cut out some pieces to form one. And so you wanna show us the, the one that you actually have complete on that blue sheet there? Yeah, Perfect. so I did this one earlier. And yeah, I just did this one with marker. So as you're doing this, um, one of the things that you need to know about the menorah is that the eight candles, you'll actually see nine, and it's a celebration of the eight days that the oil lasted. And so the eight candles that are all on the same level are actually those eight symbolic candles. The one in the middle is a little bit higher. Um, sometimes you'll see it on, an, on the end or something like that, but that's the Samash. It's always gonna be a, a slightly elevated um, candle and it's the light bearer. So that's the one that you actually use to light the other candles. And so in our craft today, what we thought was that um, the Samash candle, who or what represents the light bearer as we think about justice work. And so it's us, right? We are the ones tasked and called to do that work. And so symbolically, we cut out um, some pictures of ourselves to be the, the candle, the Samash candle that's gonna go on that little elevated um, 
spot in the center of our manure that, that Andy is making here. Yeah. So he's just going to go ahead and glue that on there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because even though, even though we would normally use the Samash candle to light the other candles, um, symbolically, he's just going to go ahead and light it and, or uh, glue it on for now. And then what we were thinking was, what are some causes that are important to you? And you've got eight different candles um, to be represented in this craft. And so flipping through magazines, what are eight causes or maybe even some similar, um, some causes and, and things in, your, in your, the world around us in our society that you feel very passionately about and that you want to impact change um, for the better of our world. And find some pictures that represent that to you, sure. Yeah. And then just go ahead and cut them out. So Andy, what, what kind of picture did you find there? Um, I found a picture um, of, it's, it's a picture of a woman sitting in her garden um, but I am just really passionate about earth justice. Great. Um, so I'm going to cut out just a little, just a little piece strip. of these plants here. Perfect. Yeah, and so whatever's much. symbolic to you, this is your project. This is your, um, it's meaningful for you. Uh, and on my house, we love to do crafts. So um, my girls, especially, they're eight, and they love anything where they get to cut stuff up, glue stuff down, and reimagine what it looks like. So yeah. you may have some friends in your home that enjoy doing the same thing, and this is a fun one for them. Yeah. So just cut out some things that are meaningful to you, and then um, if we're if we're going to adhere to Jewish practice, traditional Jewish practice then we're going to add our candles when you're looking at your menorah from the right to the left. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so Andy, it would be your Yeah, left. my left. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> and he's gonna add those on there. And also because if we are trying to be, um, you know, precise, uh, the candles that are, the eight candles should all be of the same height and they should be slightly lower than your Samash candle. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna make that one just a little smaller. Perfect. I think that'll be perfect. So he's gonna go ahead and start adding those on. If you want to, one night, um, each week, each night of the week, add a new candle, and your family might just remember the intentions that they have around that particular cause and talk about ways that you could impact change in that particular area of social justice. That's great. Um, if you want to put them all down at once and just bring it out to reflect on it periodically throughout the holidays, that's also another option. Um, and so what many, many Jewish families do is um, the oldest person in the house or the head of the household might be the one who lights the candles on the menorah each night to celebrate the eight days of Hanukkah. Um, and other families, each member of the family gets their own menorah to light. Um, I have friends who each night of the week, a different person gets to open a gift. Um, that they, they exchange some small gifts with each other. Uh, so it's really, it can vary exactly what this tradition ends up looking like in your house. Uh, and I don't think that you, like I said, I think even when you're a righteous Gentile, like Andy and myself uh, claim, you can still celebrate the holiday, the spirit of the holiday in, in some different ways. So um, Andy, you want to pull out maybe our uh, completed one, yeah. our mostly completed one, and yeah, show absolutely. everybody? Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and put this one to the side. Great. This is one that Laura worked on earlier. That is true. So you'll see my, <laughs> my uh, face adorning that in center Samash candle. Uh, yeah. But so I left mine unlit. And I picked some, some, like I said, some causes that were important to me and to my family. And so what we might do is throughout um, the holiday season, just take turns talking about those, reflecting on ways that we can be involved, and then just paste a little... Uh, candle light there up at the top when you light uh oh look at this andy you're so good he's lighting the samash candle first because like we said that is the light bearer but when we light even though we've added the candles right to left we're gonna light them left to right so the first candle that will actually be lit is the far candle all the way over on the left side and then we just light them in a row from there perfect ready for the first night of hanukkah Oh, perfect. Yeah. All right. So that's about it. It's, see, it's really quite, quite simple, and it's a great way uh, to celebrate this uh, tradition in your home. Just as Hanukkah is the festival of lights, um, our pagan friends celebrate something called Yule, which is a celebration of the sun, so also a light, right? And it begins 
on the winter solstice, which is the longest, um, longest night, the, the darkest day of the year. And it's the 12 days that follow. And they're celebrating the Earth's um, tilt and journey back towards the sun as our days begin to get a little bit longer, a little bit longer, and we, we get more sunlight. Yeah, so how is Yule celebrated? So oftentimes, um, folks celebrate with huge bonfires. They light a ton of candles. Um, they adorn wreaths and trees with pine cones and berries. Oftentimes, there's big feasts and um, some small gift exchanges. You can do uh, this activity at home to celebrate Yule uh, with your family. Um, so what you'll need to do is you'll need to cover a table uh, with, uh, with just a bunch of candles. We're setting intentions for the year, right? We're, we're thinking about what the light means to us and what we're hoping it will bring in the coming year as our days begin to stretch a little bit longer. That's right, yeah. So um, what you'll do is you'll place a candle in the middle. Uh, this is known as the sun candle. Um, we, we decorated we, ours with a little bit of puffy paint, but right, yeah. whatever you have on hand is fine. And if, if all your candles are the same size or if they're all different sizes, that's okay too. Um, you just want to designate one that'll be kind of your central one and put it up on a little, um, a little riser, a little bit higher than the others because it is going to represent the sun as you prepare all your candles. And so the candles that we picked today are electric candles because we know oftentimes if you live in an apartment, if you have small children, if you live in a residence hall, you might not be able to have open flames. And so we just got these little um, battery operated candles that we're going to use. And it all works the same way. But it does help if you kind of turn off all those lights and, and set the, the tone um, for what you are going to be um, celebrating. And so uh, Andy's got some, some traditional Yule um, prayers or intentions that he will read for us and sort of demonstrate how this works. So before you actually light any of those candles, um, you start with this opening. Yeah, so this, this is what you start with. The wheel of the year has turned once more, and the nights have grown longer and colder. Tonight the darkness begins to retreat, and light begins its return once again. As the wheel continues to spin, the sun returns to us once again. And now he's going to light the sun candle and another intention. Yeah. Even in the darkest hours, even in the longest nights, the spark of life lingered on, laying dormant, waiting, ready to return. When the time was right, the darkness will leave us now as the sun begins its journey home. And so now he's gonna begin lighting additional candles, starting with the ones closest to the sun candle and moving out. And these don't have to be in any particular order. They also don't have to be in a particular shape around the sun candle. Um, it's just the idea that we're lighting more and more and that light is spreading out from closest and it's just kind of that ripple effect of spreading out all around. You can see some similarities. There's a lot of similar symbolism in um, many pagan holidays as well as Judeo-Christian holidays. So you'll see yeah. some similar themes. Mm -hmm. And then the final uh, intention. Yeah. As the wheel turns, light returns. The light of the sun has returned to us, bringing life and warmth with it. The shadows will vanish and life will continue. We are blessed by the light of the sun. So one of the things that if your family decides to perform this uh, activity together that you might try is after you've lit all of your candles to sit and have some quiet reflection. Um, maybe it's just you alone or maybe you want to do it as a family and reflect on what does the light mean to you? What does it mean to what are some things that you're thankful for that you will be able to do alone or together as a family activities now that you'll have more light, more daylight hours um, together, and put out that intention of, of thanksgiving, of um, you know, the hopes that you have for the coming year. And if you, if you pray, then that could be your prayer. Um, and that's sort of the, the whole purpose behind doing this activity. Yeah, and you know, another thing that you could do after uh, 
after performing this ritual. Um, if, uh, if you're not too full from dinner, uh, is something else you can do. Is you can um, have some eggnog and cookies on standby uh, and just take some time to bask uh, in the light of your candles uh, and just reflect on the exercise. And like you said, reflect on the exercise that you just uh, engaged in. And then once you are done, you extinguish your candles from the outside of the circle in. Uh, right. And then go around and, and turn all the lights back then, on in your house right. and you can make it into a game. Um, you can give your children if you're like me, uh, a role to play. Maybe they flip on the light and they yell back, welcome back, son, um, or right. some other kind of fun gestures to, again, we're welcoming we're welcoming that daylight. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> we're, re we're tired of the darkness. We are ready for some more sunshine in our lives. And, uh, and so that's just a little, a little fun practice that you might enjoy from the pagan Yule celebration. But we thank you for joining us today. We hope you learned a little bit of something about these interfaith winter holidays and uh, maybe got an idea for something that you might do at home with your family. Um, and we hope that wherever you are, you know that you have our prayers uh, for you and yours, that you are safe and that you will return to us when we all can be together again. And so season's greetings from all of your friends in campus ministry.